Welcome back to Understanding Human Anatomy and part two of our discussion of the peritoneal cavity. In the last video, we described formation of the peritoneal cavity in general and formation of peritoneal structures which are suspended from the dorsal body wall by a mesentery and retroperitoneal structures. So I want to start where we left off, but I'm going to simplify the diagram. So again, we'll sketch in the outer surface of the embryo. which is primarily ectoderm. And instead of drawing in a neural tube and paraaxial mesoderm, what I'm going to do is draw in a vertebra like so. And the spinal cord would be in the central canal here. Then I want to draw in an aorta. a midline structure, and then we'll draw in some intermediate mesoderm, And on the other side, we'll draw in some intermediate mesoderm. Color it all in. And then let us draw in our primitive gut here. And now I'll sketch in the peritoneum, starting with the parietal peritoneum and have it up against the body wall. and reflecting down to become the visceral peritoneum and then the other reflection back up to join the parietal peritoneum. And I want to draw in the vascular supply coming from the aorta passing through the mesentery to supply the gut right here. So let me put some labels in to our diagram. This would be the gut. We have a mesentery, and I'll 
draw a line over to it. We have visceral and parietal peritoneum. and visceral peritoneum. Right here. Then we have the intermediate mesoderm and the aorta and as we stated in the last video the intermediate mesoderm and the aorta are retroperitoneal structures. But let's get a little more specific. These two structures develop in a retroperitoneal position. So they begin existence in a retroperitoneal position. So we can say that they are primary. retroperitoneal structures. So any structure that begins its existence in a retroperitoneal position and then stays there in the adult is said to be primary or primarily retroperitoneal. Now, we need to consider some, some things. While the embryo is developing, the primitive gut grows a lot faster than the body length. And as a consequence, the gut has to bend around to fit within the abdominal cavity. Also, the gut undergoes rotation along its long axis. It rotates in a clockwise direction when you're viewing it from above. And that also makes parts of the gut move around in the abdominal cavity. And as the gut moves around, some interesting things can happen. And we'll take a look at what happens next. Um, 
So in the next slide, we'll start the gut to move. So we'll start by erasing the gut that we have in here now. And let me draw the gut shifted over to the embryo's left. So now the gut is over here. and we'll find that the mesentery will have to follow it like so and we'll have the visceral peritoneum around it and the blood supply also will follow and then spread around like so. So now if we go back to our diagram the mesentery is shifted over here and the visceral peritoneum has stayed associated with the gut and shifted over to the embryo's left. Now if this movement continues we'll have what we'll see in the next slide. Again I'll start by erasing our gut from its previous position and now we'll move the gut all the way over to the edge of the body wall all the way over to the left edge of the body wall. And if I then draw in the mesentery, it'd be like so. and the vascular supply would come like so. And you notice that over here on the edge the visceral peritoneum is rubbing up against, it's pressed up against and it will rub through, through motion up against the parietal peritoneum. And when that happens the peritoneums fuse and as it becomes attached the area all the way over to the beginning of the mesentery also becomes attached. And what we find is that there no longer is a mesentery. Now the gut is pressed up against the body wall and fixed to the body wall.
and the gut has become retroperitoneal. It has become secondarily retroperitoneal. The mesentery is lost. There is no more mesentery. It's also fused to the body wall. The vascular supply to the gut is now retroperitoneal. And the part of the peritoneum that's covering that portion of the gut, gut bulging into the abdominal cavity has changed from visceral peritoneum to parietal peritoneum because now it is on the body wall. And again, the visceral peritoneum in this diagram no longer exists because now this part of the gut is secondarily retroperitoneal. Now, where the visceral and parietal peritoneum fuse to the body it, and attach the gut to the body wall and along the course of the previous primitive mesentery that also fuses with the parietal peritoneum. We have something called fusion fascia. So at this area in here, is known as fusion fascia for the spot of attachment of the visceral peritoneum to the parietal peritoneum. So the fusion fascia would be this area in yellow. So Structures that begin their existence as peritoneal structures can move around, be pressed against the body wall, and become secondarily retroperitoneal. And as they do so, they lose their mesentery. In the adult structures that have become retroperitoneal secondarily include the duodenum, the pancreas, the ascending colon, and the descending colon. In the next video, I want to talk about how the peritoneal cavity gets partitioned into a greater sac and a lesser sac. Thank you for your attention.